So when you're building your brand, the first thing you want to do is, you know, do some self-searching and find out exactly what you're good at and what you want to do with that skill um, and, and just go all in on it. Do you want to earn more, work less and enjoy what you do each day? It's no secret. It can be done. This podcast with Dr. T will not only educate and inspire you, it will also teach you how to do more and be more with the time you already have. Here is your host, Tyson Franklin. Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to It's No Seek with Dr. T. Now, my guest today is Asmar Gary from Jacksonville, Florida, and he is one of the coolest people in the world. In fact, he's going to give Samuel L. Jackson a run for his money. Now, he owns a company called Spirited Consulting, and he teaches bartenders about personal branding. When I first heard him on another podcast, I went, wow, you could apply that to absolutely any profession, which is why I wanted to get him on It's No Seat with Dr. T. So, Asma, how are you doing today? Dr. T, man. Thanks for having me on the show. This is so cool. Like I said, I, I heard you on another podcast, and as soon as I heard you, I went, I need to get you on this show because we need to talk to people about personal branding, not just you know, bartending, which I thought was just amazing that that you actually came up. Is this, this is an original idea by you? Yes, yes. Again, man, just being in the industry and seeing the lack of professionals building their own personal brand. You know, when you, you get into a company that's uh, classified as corporate, whether it's a hotel or restaurant, thing that you try to do first is climb up the ladder. Yeah, you know, you're trying to make it from you're trying to make it from entry level up to general manager if possible. And that's the typical route if you're going the corporate direction. The way that I seen it was why not spawn off and do your own thing? That's why I love being on uh James show, The Hospitalpreneurs, because it blended hospitality and entrepreneurship. And that's basically what the gist of branding for bartenders was was being able to take your brand as a bartender and build it out as a business, whether you want it to be a a brand or spirits consultant or you want to be a world-class bartender, you have to have your personal brand. And and this couldn't come in better timing. We we had an event last night uh, in Cairns and after the event, finished about 10 and the bar was open till midnight. So we went (laughs) and he was the worst bartender in the world and everybody agreed. Man. And what had happened, one of the one of the ladies, uh, Shanine, a friend of mine, said, went up to him and said, can you make a mojito? And he said, yes. And she says, can you make a good mojito, though? And he went, um, oh, I know what goes in a mojito, so I, I know. I know I, I'm kind of, and she, goes, she goes, let me ask you another question. If somebody said, are you good in bed, what would you say? And he hesitated and said, oh, well, you know, um, you'd have to ask my fiancé. And she went, oh, just make the bloody mojito. <laughs> So See, and, and he look was at terrible. That. As a brand, he doesn't even know it. He could be considered the worst bartender in the world, and that would be his brand if it got out there like that. Well, there was about thirty of us, and we all agreed that he was the worst bartender we've ever come across. Well, he's off to a good start. The the whole idea, like when I heard you talk about uh, bartenders and them creating their own brand, it it just intrigued me that. More people don't do it. Where, where, does, where does somebody start? Where, where, if you were talking to someone about creating their own brand, where does it start? It starts with you. I mean, looking inside of yourself and determining what your strengths are. Remember, we were talking about Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk, that's yeah. my guy, man, because I, I believe in what he's talking about. I believe wholeheartedly that you should follow your strengths. You know, he's a guy that says he was straight F student since elementary school. But he found his strong points and bet all on it. So when you're building your brand, the first thing you want to do is, you know, do some self-searching and find out exactly what you're good at and what you want to do with that skill um, and, and just go all in on it. And, and in the building your brand aspect, there are a few steps to it. You know, you want to you want to first, again, define what you're good at, who you're able to help with that. Yeah. And, you know, Again, take those steps, take those steps, develop, get better, and, and continue to grow. What makes a good bartender compared to uh, an average or the one that we have? Well, I know what makes a bad bartender. Well, well first, you want, you want to know how to make a mojito. Yeah. <laughs> you so, know, and, and that yeah. goes into a brand itself. 
as well. Um, you know, whether it's a drink, I may be the greatest margarita maker in the world. Yeah. That's a part of my brand. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to go to different tequila distilleries, learn everything that I can about the spirit that I use to make my specialty drink and just continue to learn and grow. If you have a skill or you have a passion in a certain area, then what you're saying, like Gary Vee, you go all in and you just get better. You become the best person for that particular, like, like a margarita, for example. Yes, yes. And, you know, from there, it's all about the outreach. When you have a brand, you're not going to keep it to yourself. So another part of branding is networking, is getting the word up, out about who you are and what your capabilities are. So how do, how do bars cope with if the bartender becomes bigger than the bar? Is that ever a problem? Not a problem. Because if the bartender becomes bigger than the bar, there for one, the bar is going to benefit. There's no doubt about it. The bar is going to benefit when you have a bartender with a great brand and a great following. Okay. That means the, yeah. people, the people that support him and, and you know follow his brand, they're going to be in your bar more than likely nine times out of ten. So, so yeah, and that's true. Like I must admit, but there's certain there's a bar here in Cairns called the Three Wolves, and there's three three partners that own it, and they are also awesome bartenders. And if for any reason that business, yeah, if they decided to close that up, those three bartenders could go anywhere in Cairns, and people would follow wherever they went because they are so good at what they do. Exactly, and and that's the one thing you don't want to do is lose your job and have nothing to fall back on. <laughs> So, and you, you actually have a, a, like a bartender branding academy. People can actually learn more about branding like as bartenders. Um, they can yes. actually contact you and do all that. So just a little bit about my background. Um, yeah. I, I started bartending in 2008 at Del Frisco's Double Eagle Steakhouse in Philly. And from there, you know, I didn't take to it at first. You know, I didn't see it as a career, long-term career. And I stepped out of bartending a little bit. In about 2014, I became brand ambassador and sales rep for a company in New York called Vakila. So this is one of the first hybrid spirits where they blended a vodka and tequila together. Mm, I've never had that. And um, oh yeah, it's 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 a really good blend. Actually, there, there's a guy that I follow um, called Don Ferguson, and he runs a podcast on or a, a vlog on YouTube yeah. called Teak Light, where he goes over a bunch of tequilas. But anyway, starting with that brand there and seeing that, okay, well, I'm still in the hospitality industry, still able to work around spirits. I'm going to take this and build this as my brand. I am the ambassador for spirits per se. And, um, you know, I, I built the business out around it called Spirited Consulting. And my whole goal with that company was to help independent liquor companies grow their brand and grow their account base in the territories that I was in, okay. which happened to be North Florida now. So I've been running that since 2014. Then in last year, I realized a lot of the places that I would go to and try to sell our spirits, the bartender would ask me, how did you get your job? It's <laughs> Good question. Right. How did you get a liquor company to back you? And you know, you're out here selling cases of liquor and Boom, the idea went off in my head to create branding for bartenders because it was a question that I got a lot of times from bartenders. It, it just, it's so simple, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, from there it was just, okay, how, how do I put in, how, how do I formulate the, the steps that I took becoming a, you know, going from a bartender to brand ambassador to sales rep to sales consultant for independent liquor companies? So basically, I took that and put it into a four-week course. And what it breaks down to is, again, finding your spirit animal, which is one of the uh, lessons in the course. Yeah. Finding that spirit that you love. You know, it may be tequila, it may be whiskey, maybe rum, maybe Japanese whiskey. Okay, so really narrow down the niche of the spirit. Exactly. And again, like I was referring to the guy, he has a, a vlog called Teak Life, which is all about tequila. Yeah. So all he does is review different sorts of tequila from all over the world. So that is his niche. That is his spirit animal. Like I, I like to call it. Um, 
So yeah, that's one of the first lessons in module one is finding that spirit animal, finding that one that you resonate with and is your specialty. I love that name. I love that name. I just love that name, the spirit animal. Spirit animal, yes. <laughs> that is, but that is I, cool. again, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna tell everyone about it. So another part of branding for bartenders, I'm I'm just dropping little tidbits and stuff, you know, about the about the modules and lessons. What I just want to point out to people, as you're listening to this, if you're not a bartender, I, that's not important. What you do is look at your own it's profession <laughs> and go, okay, say podiatry, for example, yeah, feet. That's, if mm -hmm. you're working for a podiatry business, you yourself are still the podiatry. You can build a brand around what it is in your profession that you love more than anything else. Or if you're Absolutely. A, a physiotherapist, you could be a, uh, a clothing designer. There might be a certain that fashion. Is, that, that, is, that is exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Because whatever profession you're in, again, you, you have a personal brand, whether you want one or not. It's all about how you define and develop it. Okay. So, yeah, so keep going. Go, go on to the next step that you were talking about. So we've, we've talked about the spirit animal. Building your spirit animal or determining what your spirit animal is, you want to get the word out about what you do. So we have a section in there called showcasing your shift. That was shift. That was shift, wasn't it? You did say shift. Yes, that was shift. 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 Like okay. a work shift. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you want to showcase your shift. So I tell bartenders all the time, if you're working at a place, there's no reason why you people shouldn't know you're there. Everyone in your network should know what time you work, what days you work, and, you know, what specialty cocktails you'll be serving for that night. Me, I like to go into work and I'll just create something off the whim. Yeah. You know, I like right now I'm, I'm getting heavy into mezcals since I'm such a tequila fan and I'll go into work and I say, you know what, I'm going to make a specialty mezcal cocktail for the for this evening. And what I'll do is let everybody know, hey, I'm working happy hour tonight from five to eight. And my specialty cocktail is a mezcal margarita. You know, so I'm, I'm showcasing my shift. I'm letting people know where I'm going to be at, what time, and what specialty drink I'm making. That is brilliant. Again, that's furthering furthering your brand. And how do you how do you let people know? Do you, you do this through social media, I take it? Absolutely. Social media is it. You know, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever new ones that are out right now. I know there are a few that I'm not on because I'm, I find myself going between generation X and Y. Okay, so even a chef, if a chef was listening to this and a chef was, same thing, they have, they, 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 they wouldn't have a spirit animal, they might have a food animal. And Right, they have a food animal. And then they're not going to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So there's going to be certain times when they're working at that restaurant and other times when they're not. Absolutely. So they can get on social media and go, hey, tonight I am working from, yeah, you know, I'm working Friday night from 7 to 10 and... Tonight, I'm going to be creating this new thing for the menu. It's going to be the chef special. That's the sort of thing that they need to push out there. Absolutely. And one, one thing that I like seeing is the independent caterers. I have real fondness for them because they do the, the meal preps. I am a big meal prep freak. Like, I, I love the idea that you can, you know, cook a whole meal for the week and not have to worry about cooking again at yeah. all for the rest of the week. <laughs> like, that just appeals to me so much because I, I don't like cooking. So when you have those chefs that branch out and build their brand as a caterer or a, a meal prep chef, um, again, they, they have so much ideas that they can, so much content ideas that they can push out. You know, whether it's, hey, this is the meal for the week or, you know, seven steps to prepping for seven days. They have so much stuff that they can put out there and share their brand. And I think that a lot of them, they do, but some of them don't. Some of them do need to take advantage of, of a personal branding course or, or some lessons. So is it only, only bartenders that can do your course or can other people do your course even if they're not a bartender or it's it's very specific to that niche? Very specific. I would say branding for bartenders is very specific to our industry, you know, including bartenders. Yeah. Um, but again, the teachings in it, they're, they're, they are transferable. Um, if you're building a personal brand, again, you can take some of the stuff that I'm talking about geared towards bartenders and turn it towards chefs or uh, podiatrists. Yeah, I, th I think it's great. It's all in the teachings. Yeah, I'm talking about 
cocktails and I'm talking about bar managers and stuff like that. But if you're able to decipher it and, and take it and use it for what you need it for, more power to you. Yeah. So, so what's after? So, so we've got the spirit animal, which I still love mm-hmm. that. Uh, yes. And then we're talking about telling people about your shift. What, what, what comes mm-hmm. up? What is there? Is there another step? Yeah. Le- lesson three in branding for bartenders is your brand voice. It's called bar talk. So, you know, if you sat down and you talked to a bartender before, you know, we're pretty laid back, relaxed, use some profanity, you know, it, it's, it's our voice that we use, you know, it, it's our, our, our tone that we use that makes people comfortable with us. And that's what I get into in lesson three. Is it like your mannerisms as well? Is it like, is your body language part of your voice on, on how you communicate with, with uh, the oh, customer? Most definitely. That, not only your body language is even in how you dress. Even ah, how you dress. yes. Um, you know, cause me, I, I like to put on my own flair. Right yeah. now, I'm a bartender at South Kitchen and Spirits in uh, Ponte Vedra Beach out here in, in Jacksonville. But, you know, we have <clears throat> we have that craft bar that's so cool that we really don't have a dress code. You know, we come in jeans, shirt, and I always try to make sure I have some type of way to stand out, whether it be a ripped jeans or something that I put on my shirt. It might be a sticker that I lay on my shirt, but... It's going to be something that is a conversation piece. It's going to make somebody say something. And that's what you want to do. You know, you want to have that type of brand that stands out. And that comes down to your brand voice. Okay. That makes sense. And, yeah, the bartender I was talking about earlier on, the one that was really bad, if if, mm-hmm. if you had to describe him, you would have gone, um, <laughs> there, was, there was nondescript. Seems like probably he was, be the had la- a lot of lack of confidence. Yeah, it's like he was. Um, he usually worked in the back room in the kitchen, you know, sort of doing the the dishes. And all of a sudden, they said, "We need a bartender. Do you think you can? Can you pour a beer?" Uh, yeah, I think so. And he was thrown out <laughs> there, but didn't have the communication skills. And, we, and we we're trying to start conversations, but he just he just right. he lacked communication skills, and he wasn't really dressed like I don't know. Probably it was a motel bar. So, and I think sometimes oh. motel bars don't put a lot of the, what they're missing they need someone like you to go in there and go if you want to get people in your bar not just the people that are staying in the motel you need to yeah. sort of jazz it up a little bit most definitely and i mean for bars i think it is i think it's very vital that they offer branding to their bartenders or personal branding courses or lessons to their bartenders it only benefits them it only benefits them because if your bartender is not personable and he's honestly turning people away or making people leave sooner than they ex- sooner than they would have yeah yeah they, they lose they money that's in personal branding for their bartender <laughs> well there there's a there's a bar there's a motel in brisbane uh mantra midtown and there's a bar downstairs i can't remember the name of the bar anyway the the guy who works in there he if you were shooting a movie and you wanted a bartender to play a particular role because you'd stereotype what the bartender looked like he is uh-huh. he is the perfect person he talks well he's got the coolest beard in the world um, okay he's got that really deep sort of voice when he talks like he's you know he sucked yeah. back 50 cigars like yeah and i said well, i was there having dinner with my brother and i said what do you think about him as a bartender he said he is an awesome bartender he came up. He chatted to us at the table. Wanted to know how the drinks were that he'd made for us. Um, was he was he was interested that we were actually having a good time at the bar. Yes, and that's a gar- that's a good bartender, and that's a part of his brand. Yeah. Again, in the, in the brand voice, I get to talking about the character, your tone, your purpose, and the type of language that you use, and that could be either in front of directly in front of your guests or social media. And what's interesting is I'm talking about him now. That's how good a bartender he was. That's that's it. That's the, that, those are the keys that you're looking for. You know, someone that, that knows how to use their tone, knows how to use their character, whether, you know, they're friendly, warm, whether they're playful um, pro, or just professional or inspiring. Like, that's yeah. the character that you're giving off. And you want people to know that from jump, who you are, that you're you're okay to talk to and... You know, if I if I come and bring a a a problem to you, it's not going to be a problem for you. 
Yeah. Can do you think you can you can teach you can teach that skill of communication and that brand voice to someone who doesn't actually have it? Absolutely. I mean, a, a student is a teacher is just as good as the student that's open to learning. Okay, that's the part. That's they've got to be open to learning. So, like the bartender yes. I was talking about the other night, who was no good. I don't think you could actually crack that shell. <laughs> well, again, he was the worst bartender in the world. So there, it may be just a lost call. It may be a lost call. And, and there's nothing you can do about that. I think the hotel should actually get a shirt for him, the worst bartender in the world. And people would come to the motel just to be served by the worst bartender in the world. And, and, and that's what I said. I said he's off to a good start. And that was no joke because... <laughs> That is a brand. There's T-shirts out there that say "Okayest Bartender in the World," yeah. and that's become big. Like that's a that's a big selling T-shirt right now. I've seen it all over the place, and um, you know, someone went with it. Actually, it may have been Tipsy Bartender that made that shirt popular. Okay, so so okay, so we've 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 done the the spirit. We've done the shift. We've spoken about the brand voice. Is there another step you take them through after that? Because the thing is, what, what I'm really liking about this is I'm picturing all these different professions, people listening mm -hmm. to this particular episode going, holy crap, what have I been doing my whole life at work? Why have I not pulled my finger out of my bum and actually started building my own brand within the business that I'm in? You know what's amazing? That... People that that don't have the brand in there, you know, in the corporate world or corporate sector. Yeah. They don't have their own personal website. And I, I think that is absolutely asinine. Your first name, last name could actually be a domain. Like right now, um, I'm, I'm sure there's someone in my field that I can go and buy their name right now. I can buy their first last name dot com. Like yeah. I have asmargary.com, I can buy your first last name dot com, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be taking advantage of that. Yeah, well, I actually have tysonfranklin.com. dot com. That's for for that Here exact reason because I, I didn't want to throw I didn't want to throw you out there, Doctor T. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm glad that I'm glad that you are. I'm glad that you did. Yeah, well, it's it, because it's something people should do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one one major part of building your brand is getting that piece of real estate online. You know, that is, that is the third module in branding for bartenders is building your online presence, where I talk about building a, a dope bartender website or just putting some content out there, whether it be, you know, a, a short blog or article on LinkedIn or a short video on YouTube. It's building that presence. And I think it starts with getting that first name, last name dot com. Yeah, that is that is fantastic advice. And I've got a few friends who they they uh, you know, register domain names for people, and they say that all the time. Mm -hmm. Go and get, register your own name and own that real estate because it has so much value to it. My son, his name is Tyson as well, and he goes, mm -hmm. yeah, he goes, I can't believe you. Re he'd say his name's Tyson Franklin, and he's gone. Damn it, you've uh -huh. already got it. He's, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> and I said. Bad luck. Hey, <laughs> hopefully he has a middle name. I told him Jay Franklin. I told him he can have it when I'm dead. There you go. Yeah, I'll pass so, it on. That'll be in my will. Yeah, it'll be a long wait though. <laughs> there you go. So but yeah, that that's again, that's one good start to building that online presence is getting your first name, last name, domain, and uh, starting there. It could just be, uh, you know, a cool profile picture or a picture that you use for LinkedIn and what I like to call your capability statements. So what are you capable of? And you can write that in, in, in short five line sentence. You know, this is what I do. I'm a, whether I'm a hospitality professional or I'm a physician or, you know, I'm a chef. Again, it, it's, it's all about what you do and how you do it. Like I said before, I think there'd be a lot of people listening to this who would be kicking themselves going, why didn't I hear this five years ago when I was starting my career or I was working for that company? I've been writing so many articles and giving it to them and they've been uploading it on their websites where I could mm -hmm. have actually had my own website and I could be sharing my own opinions and thoughts. Um, I, Gary Vee has said that. You know, just yeah. have an opinion and just get it out yeah. there and share and let people know what you what you think and what you actually stand for 
and one day it may turn into something. It may not, but at least you're putting it out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I really didn't start blogging until last year, so early last year, about April. And it was because I was, again, trying to share a lot of the stuff that I wanted to put out there. Like, you know, how I would go into an account or a potential account and get told no 20 to 30 times a day, you know, when I'm trying to sell a new spirit. And those are the things that I wanted bartenders to know that was interested in, you know, going into that direction, brand ambassador or sales rep or sales consultant that, you know, this is the day to day. This is what you're going to be faced with, you know, dealing with um, distributor reps and ordering from different uh, companies. Yeah. You know, they have their ordering schedules. So I started blogging about that, and really, that's what turned into branding for bartenders. What what I what I like about you talking about your course though is, you've created a course based on uh, actual experience of actually going through that process, and now you're sharing it and giving it back to other people. You're not just keeping all that information to yourself oh, and, yeah. and not sharing oh, yeah. it, which I think is brilliant. And not even just the the things that I did. Like I share plenty of templates. Like when I. I came on with SX Liquors, whose CEO, David Knight, he was um, he was the VP of marketing and sales for Nike, for Gatorade, for eBay. Yeah. Like, I reached out to him on LinkedIn through a short message and got great response. And we, we communicated through email after that for the next six months before I came on as the sales rep for SX Liquors. And... In branding for bartenders, I give that all away. Like I I literally screenshot the message that I sent to the CEO. I I screenshot the the emails back and forth between me and him. You know, what's not confidential, but I put that out there. Like there's no secrets. There's nothing that I'm hiding here. So if you go in here and you're like, oh, well, he told me that, but how do I really put it into action? Yeah. You get all that. Like I give a, a media kit template. Because one of the things that I was telling bartenders was, hey, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to have a resume. You have a media kit showing the companies that you've represented or the cocktails that you specialize in. That's enough to get you a job and some. It just, it just makes so much sense and why people aren't doing this, not just as bartenders, but in every profession. And, you know, like... And you know what? The, the it's right. It's been right there in front of us all. When you have a look at all the celebrity chefs that are out there, and they've created yeah. their own brand and their own profile, which is bigger than any restaurant they could ever work in. So it's been yeah. right in front of us, and you've all of a sudden just clicked onto it in the bartending world, which is now making us share it to the whole world. Um, in in whatever profession people are actually doing. Yes, and I mean bartending is such a global trade that I, I, I was sure that I was able to, you know, reach people outside of Florida, outside of the States. So that's, you know, it, it's my passion, but just having that reach, yeah. I, I knew it was a great direction to go into. Yeah, I saw a quote actually on your website, website, or it might have been on your Facebook page actually, and it said, okay. what you do when the bar closes is what really matters. Yes, 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 And I went, yes, that, yes, that, is, yes. that is brilliant, and I think, Every profession, every occupation, what you do when you close up at the end of the day, that's what actually really matters, not what you do between nine to five. Absolutely. And that, that couldn't be truer because everything is everything is truly built behind the scenes. You know, before you open a bar, before you open your doors, you have so many things that you're doing. Again, it's the administrative tasks that you do. The fact that I, I was up at 530 this morning you know, handling some of those tasks before we jumped on this call. Yeah. And, you know, those are the things that people don't see. Yeah. They, and yeah. And that's, that, that's what I reckon a lot of employees, when they see the business owner, they might go, oh, they're, you know, they're driving the car or they're taking big holidays. Is they don't see that the employer, the person that owns a business, was probably up at 4 35 o'clock and they've already worked mm-hmm. for three hours before you've even got to work. <laughs> right, and they probably worked for another four hours when you went home at five o'clock. They were there till nine o'clock, and they did this for a long time. Nobody ever sees that; they only ever see like the the end product. Yeah, that's what it's about. And when it comes to you know specifically bartending, 
you think about before the before your shift, you have to cut limes, you have to cut lemons, oranges, and uh, you know you have to do all of your prep work. You have to you mop and sweep the floors and lay down your um, lay down your mats, clean your drains, all of those things that you have to do before a guest walks in your door. Yeah, they don't realize. You know, they, they usually don't realize, and that's the stuff that really counts because without it, you wouldn't be able to open your doors. Yeah. And so, and it's the prep that makes the job easier at the, yeah, when, yes. when, when the game's actually on, it's all that preparation beforehand that really pays off. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yes. I like that. And, and it is, it's terrible when you go to a bar and all of a sudden you say, oh, I'll have a, um, like a margarita, I'll have something that requires a few slices of lime. And, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden, they're cutting a lime up while you're there, and you're going, yeah, and like sometimes, every Why second, every second, time? yeah, every second counts when you, then yeah. there's a lineup at the bar, and you know, they're cutting that lime up for you, uh, and then they're doing it for the next person. That All that time is money that's not being spent when there's people in the business. Exactly. Exactly. So it is what what you do when the bar closes or when your doors to your business closes is what really counts. So so what's next? So we, we've gone through from the from the spirit animal and we've gone through to now having your own website with your domain name. Is there is there another piece of information you you really like to push home to people to drive that message? So, again, I, I like to point people in the direction. I don't just want to give you information yeah. and leave it up to you to implement it. So one of the parts that I like most about branding for bartenders is the section that I put five businesses for modern day bartenders. So module four is five businesses for modern day bartenders, where, again, I talk about some of the things that I've actually done. So about two years ago, I went to a big festival, bartended at this festival, over a few thousand people. Yeah. Right. So at the end of the night, you know, we're doing all of our cleanup, and as you can imagine, there are tons of bottles, hundreds of empty alcohol bottles. And I get to thinking, like, hey, you know, what what is something that I can do with these bottles? You know, and they're they're really good bottles. You know, like the big Ciroc bottles, people like those, um, and some of the tequila bottles, like the Patron. People like those bottles just just to have the bottles. And I'm like, man, what could I do that could you know, make this everlasting, started making candles out of these bottles. And not an original concept by far, something that I had seen prior on maybe Pinterest or something. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that would be great for my market because even though it's been done before, I had never seen it here in Jacksonville, Florida. So one of the things I talk about is as a bartender, at the end of your shifts, What do you have? You have empty bottles. You can take these home. What I did was I I got a a wet tile saw, started cutting the the bottle, sanding them down, filling them with soy wax and fragrances and making candles out of these liquor bottles. Yeah, I'm I'm liking where this is heading. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, having ideas beats just having information. Yeah. So, again, in, in, in one of the last modules, I give... Um, ideas on how to become, how to go from a bartender to candle maker. But, but I think every profession, not just bartenders, could look at what they're doing or things that's left over at the end of the day or wastage and what what can you do with the rubbish instead of just throwing yes. it out. Can it be yeah. used elsewhere? Can you turn but, it? Can you turn it into a, a product or or create some form of income from it? Yes, I, I, I hate waste. That is one thing that I hate in our industry in a whole. We do a lot of waste. We do a lot of wasting, whether it's just the food or the drinks or the bottles itself. Like we literally put them directly in the trash because in a restaurant, you really don't have room or cost or I'm sorry, the budget for recycling, recycling costs. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so we we just throw these bottles, which are beautiful bottles sometimes, directly in the trash. And I'm like, man, plenty of bartenders could take those and create a side hustle just off of the bottles. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I got I got a friend who's got a, a distillery um, up on the Tablelands, up about an hour away from where I live, called uh, Mount Uncle Distillery. And okay. 
he they make whiskey rum it's a it's a local brewery that they make up there but it's actually it's won a, a number of awards and i actually have it in my bar at home but nice. his bottles are beautiful that when they're empty you you don't have the heart to throw them out because they're too nice right. they are so i'll have to take a photo and actually send you uh through facebook what these bottles look like um yes, please. they're an amazing bottle and the rum and the whiskey that he makes is uh it's pretty damn good nice and and the thing with the the candle thing when i first started doing it i i said you know what i'll just set up at maybe a flea market or arts market or craft market and sell these to locals man i had different contacts with uh multiple liquor companies so i started reaching out to them and saying hey is there any way that I can make these for your company? Maybe you can give them away as gifts to your new accounts or, you know, you can have have them as a, a upsell or giveaway to somebody that buys your bottles. Yeah. You know, because I, I, I make the mini ones, too. Like if you ever seen the uh, the mini Jack Daniels bottles. Yeah. Like, you know, you can make make candles out of those and you can give those away. Like, hey, buy a bottle of uh, Jack Daniels and you get a mini candle. Many Jack Daniels candles. So it's really just, it's thinking outside the box. It's just... Thinking it's, outside the box. Instead of just making a drink for someone, someone wants a margarita, don't just make a margarita, make the best margarita, become the margarita king. And, the top margarita, yes. Yeah, become the world's uh, greatest margarita. Probably have a mariachi band behind you or something like that uh, while you're making yes. it. Master of margaritas. The master of margaritas. You have a bull in the bar. Take a bull to work with you. So, I, like, sure. I know, like, I know your uh, push for time a little bit. So, I've got one last question for you before we go. And this is a question I ask all my guests. And sometimes I warn them I'm going to ask this. And sometimes I don't, which is in this case. Sure. It's, it's Monday morning. You know, you're sitting at a bus stop. A guy sits next to you. And he goes, you're that asthma Gary guy who's the super coolest bartender in the world. You know, I, I'm not a bartender. I'm just a, an average guy who, who works somewhere. What's the number one tip you would give me when I walk into work Monday morning? So let me get this right. You're a bartender or I'm the bartender? Well, you're the bartender. I, he's listened to this podcast. He's heard you talk. And he goes, wow, I've heard all about this personal branding. You know, I work in an office job somewhere for the, for the okay. government. He's, an, he's a government worker. How boring <laughs> is that? And wow. he wants to he wants to lift his personal profile and his brand being a government worker, say in the Treasury Department. That's a tough one. Yeah. Well, with Treasury Department, and I believe in any profession, there is an opportunity to become a consultant, to to consult somebody to do exactly what you're doing, do exactly what you're doing, or you can consult other companies as an independent instead of being that government worker employee. Nice. So the first first thing that I would tell him is find out his value. You know, what with the company that you're working for now, what do you do for them that they pay you for and keep you around for? Yeah. That's your capabilities. So when you're when you're able to find out that that's your strength and you can take that anywhere. The next thing we'll do is buy your first name, last name dot com and yeah. put those capability statements right on the front page. I love it. I love it. That's exactly what I was after. The reason I asked that question is because nobody, no, no two people have answered it the same way because everyone I interview, awesome. everyone I talk to is different. So therefore, I always get a different answer. And yes. And it's one of those things too. I suppose like even if someone was working for the government in the Treasury Department, but they might be an awesome guitar player, then they could set mm -hmm. up their own website under their own name like you just mentioned and only talk mm -hmm. about guitars because that might be where they go down the track. True enough. True enough. Because if what you're doing as your career is not your passion or it's not what your true strength is, yeah. I would advise for you to go and find something else. Go and find something you're passionate about. So, Asma, yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming on. It's no secret with Dr. T. This has been fantastic. And I, like I said, I've listened to you on a podcast once before. And what I like about the one we've just done now is it's different to what you did last time. Um, yes. <laughs> it's been, it's been a lot of like fun. It, you know, free flow. 
Yeah, and that and that's how I, I like this show to go is I don't really have set questions. We just see where the mm-hmm. conversation goes. And I try and ask questions that I think someone listening to this would be going, geez, I hope you asked this question. So <laughs> if I haven't asked if I haven't asked Asma the question that you wanted, send me an email and we'll figure it out. Now, Asma, how can people find you online? Yeah, you know, if people want to connect with you, where, where's your website, where's your details so that they can actually grab you? Good thing for me, my mom, she gave me a very unique name. She did. Yes. So in Asmar, you you can pretty much bet that if you search Asmar, you're going to find me, the one and only. There are a few others out there, but none is, you know, none is stands pretty. Out as none is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, anywhere, anywhere you can find me online, Asmar Gary, personally, and our brand name is called Spirited Consulting Co., so whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you're going to find the business at Spirited Consulting Co. And of course, you can look me up asmargary.com or brandingforbartenders.com. Yeah, I found you. I found you really easy, which was great. So I know, and I'll put all these links in the notes so people can find you. So Asma, thank you so much once again for being on It's No Seat with Dr. T. Dr. T, thanks for having me, man. You have a great day. And it's only about... 12, no, eight hours until I can have a glass of whiskey. Yeah, I know. It's early morning for you, but me, it's almost (laughs) 10 p.m. and I can go and have another one. (laughs) There you go. Enjoy, Dr. T. Well, I think you'd agree Asma Gary is one cool dude. And if Samuel L. Jackson happens to be listening to this right now, I'm sure he is shaking in his boots. So I just want to rehash a couple of things that Asma spoke about, which I think are really important and need to be driven home. Well, these points need to be driven home. The first one was find your spirit animal. Now, even though he's talking about bartending, he's talking about a specific spirit, I think every profession, every industry needs to follow that concept. So podiatry is my background and there's a lot of podiatrists. We are all trained the same way. However, when we're going through, we do have areas of interest. And I think it's really important to find that area and become as good as you can in that area and be known for that area. The second thing he spoke about was showcase your shift. And I think a lot of us do that already. You know, if we were talking to a patient or if you were talking to a client, if you don't work on Fridays, you'll normally tell them, I don't work on Fridays. And that's that's actually letting them know when your shifts are actually on. You might work Monday to Thursday and a Saturday morning. So it's really important to let your patients, clients, or customers know when you're going to be available. The third point was your brand voice, or as Asma explained it, he called it bar talk. And it was about how you dress. Yeah, how you present yourself says a lot about you. It's your body language. It's the language that you actually use. What is the purpose behind what it is that you're doing? Your voice, the tone of your voice, all these things help build your personal brand. And the fourth thing was your online presence. And it was a great point, and I've done it. Go and register your own name if you haven't already done it. That is just real estate that you need to own. So I do have TysonFranklin.com, even though it does upset my son, who's called Tyson as well. But get out there and go and get it done. Now, at the moment, even if you've got your own website for your own business, you can still build your own personal brand within your own business. If you happen to be an employee, there's nothing stopping you building your own brand within a company that you work with. This is especially important if you have an interest outside of what it is that you're known for. If you're a guitar player, if you like wine, you might be a barbecue king. There's nothing stopping you talking about that somewhere else and actually building up a profile. And I know if you bring that profile back into your business, they will give you a connection with your patients, clients, or customers, and it's a conversation piece. So if you have any questions after listening to this podcast, please send me an email, tf at tysonfranklin.com or connect with me through my website, tysonfranklin.com or reach out to Asma Gary and ask the man himself who actually shared this awesome information. So my guest next week is Super Joe Pardo and he is from Philadelphia and he's written a book called Sales Won't Save Your Business, a very, very intriguing topic and we had a very intriguing conversation. Here's a little snippet of what Super Joe had to say. 
if you if you're fortunate enough to be starting your business right now, starting it in a way that you you put your lifestyle first and you're building it for your lifestyle. If you're not there yet, um, or or you're already starting, you've already had your business and you're already like you know in full swing of like my business is running me 24 seven because it never it never stops. Everybody wants to keep you know interacting with your business. Um, then you just need to start picking it apart piece by piece. Believe me when I say you're going to absolutely love what Super Joe shares on next week's episode. Now, before I go, I just want to mention an event that I'm holding in Cairns on the 17th and 18th of August this year. I've got three international speakers from America coming over. There's Dave Freeze, Tom Foster, and Buster Tate, and they are amazing. And the conference is titled Communication, Persuasion, and Influence. And I've also got seven local speakers who are going to be sharing information in this particular area it is going to be a two-day event you will not want to miss so before i go i just want to leave you with a quote basically from today's show that asma shared with us and it was what you do when the bar closes is what really matters just keep that in mind what you do before and after work makes so much difference to your business okay that's it from me take care of yourselves look after your family and i will talk to you again next week bye for now